The Aviators are on because we are talking Top Gun Maverick, baby, and I absolutely love this movie. Tom Cruise is the GOAT. There is nobody in Hollywood that does action like Tom Cruise. Once again, he's proven he is probably the biggest movie star in the world. And from the moment that the opening of this movie hit, I was on board. Now, it's not without its faults. We'll talk about that you know, through minor spoilers throughout this review. But if you want the spoiler-free version of this film, it is awesome. Absolutely awesome. I loved it. All right, what's up, guys? I'm Bobby. As you can tell, I am pumped all about Top Gun Maverick. I'm super happy this movie came out in the cinemas. I know it's been delayed multiple times. Everybody was saying, just release it online, and Tom Cruise is like, no, I can't do that. And I'm so glad they waited. This movie deserves to be seen on the big screen. You are going to see visuals. You are going to see uh, the cinematography with the F-18s and a, a new prototype SR-72 variant Blackbird jet that just is going to blow your mind. We have never seen planes film like this on film before. It's awesome to see. And I get why Tom Cruise wanted this in the cinemas and I'm glad we waited because this is a timeless movie. It doesn't matter if it was shot two, three years ago or what. It doesn't matter. It is beautiful. Awesome. Okay. Anyway, let's get into talking a little bit about the storyline. We'll talk about some minor spoilers and all that great stuff. But man, I'm on board. So if you want to wait, watch the movie first. You can turn off the video now and then come back after you watch Top Gun Maverick. But if you're all on for a little bit of spoilers, let's get down to it. Here at Geek Culture, we love our keyboards, especially with the all-new Logitech MX Keys Mini. An elegant and functional keyboard, its ultra-responsive rounded keycaps are super stable and quiet for more productivity. There are buttons to enable dictation, microphone audio control, and emojis. The backlit keys illuminate when you get close and matches the lighting of the environment you're in. It lasts up to 10 days on a full charge or 5 months with the backlights turned off. To find out more about the Logitech MX Keys Mini and their latest range of products, head over to Logitech.com. Top Gun Maverick opens up pretty much the exact same way as the original Top Gun movie. The same music, the same visuals on the aircraft carrier, kind of more modernized a little bit. Joe Kaczynski did a great job translating the original that Tony Scott shot, and then he brought his own sort of feel to it, but it's the, it's the essence of Top Gun, which is awesome. And as soon as you hear that theme music, man, you get chills through your body. If you were a fan of the original film, you are going to love it. Okay, so after the... The title sequence is over. We kind of meet Pete Mitchell. He's uh, sort of a test pilot, very reminiscent of a Chuck Yeager type, you know, when he's got to test out this hypersonic or supersonic jet that has to hit Mach 9. And they've never hit Mach 9. They've been testing it for months. They've never hit Mach 9. I think the closest they got was Mach 7. And they've got a timeline to hit. And they've got this uh, character, Kane, played by Ed Harris, who's He's fantastic. He's not in the movie that much, which is unfortunate, but Ed Harris, he could do one scene and he just steals the whole damn thing, right? He's that good. Anyway, uh, Ed Harris's character is all about drones and AI and robots flying in the future. It's not about pilots, but you know, Maverick is like, hey man, I still got, I still got the goods, we still can do this. Anyway, so it's this race against the clock about hitting Mach 9. Can Maverick do it? Can he hit Mach 9 or can he go beyond? And I'm not going to tell you what happens. He kind of probably knows what happens because, you know, the movie, this is just the beginning of the film. But it's the tension. And there's nobody who can fly a plane on film like Tom Cruise, man. The passion, that visceral feeling that you, 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 uh, you would get being in a cockpit, he portrays that on screen so good. It's awesome to see this, man. There's no actor in Hollywood that does this, man. Because he's a pilot himself, so he feels it. He portrays it and the speeds they hit, it is, oh man, the tingles that you get. Man, when he puts on that helmet and it says Maverick, you're like, hell yeah, I'm in for this shit. I'm all in. Sorry, I'm a little bit pumped up, but I really like this movie. Okay, afterwards, gets his ass chewed out, kind of like the original Top Gun. He gets sent back to Top Gun school, but he's like, for what? And it's to train pilots for a mission that is almost impossible to accomplish. And these pilots are some of the best of the best that graduated after he did, of course. But he's one of the only pilots, you know, in Top Gun uh, school that actually took out three enemy aircraft at a go, which 
makes him sort of a legend in the school. So he goes back to Top Gun school. And here's the thing, man. I'm just going to spoil a little bit for you, but you kind of maybe already seen this in the trailers before, right? He gets on the original Kawasaki Ninja, man. He puts on the leather jacket, puts on the aviators. He says, screw the helmet. I'm Tom Cruise. I don't need a helmet. Hair is blowing beautifully. Guy hasn't lost a strand of hair since he was 22. And he's just driving down the road, having a blast, man. It is awesome. It is like reminiscent of the original Top Gun movie. And I loved every bit of it. It's it's a little bit of fan service. Hell, it's a lot of fan service. But you have a blast watching this damn thing. It is so much fun to watch. Anyway, gets a Top Gun school, walks through the halls, see his pictures with, uh, you know, obviously, you know, Iceman, Val Kilmer with there as well. You know, Goose, all these great char all the great characters from the original Top Gun movie. They were in there. I mean, these guys are somewhat legends in the school, right? Then he decides to go to a bar, right? You know, the local kind of bar for Top Gun, right? And then he goes and we get to meet Jennifer Connelly, right? Jennifer Connelly, man, she is absolutely stunning in this film. She's a fantastic actress, but she's beautiful, right? And her and Tom Cruise had a previous relationship, I mean, term Pete Mitchell, I should say, had a previous relationship. Things, you know, they aren't the same right now, but, but the chemistry between these two, you know something's up. And honestly, I gotta tell you this, right? The chemistry between Tom Cruise and Jennifer Connelly is fantastic. You buy this relationship from the get-go, they had a past. They still have the little bit of that love and feeling between them each other. Oh man, it is all good. It is, it's really good. And that relationship really helps sell the movie going forward because that's sort of the human element to a lot of it. And that's how they kind of portray this journey with Pete Mitchell is Jennifer Connelly's character as well. It's, she's beautiful. And her character's name is Penny. And yeah, her and Pete Mitchell just beautiful. Then we get to meet Rooster, who is Goose's son played by Miles Teller. And this is very interesting because there is there is a history there between Pete Mitchell and Rooster. And uh, I call him by his call sign because it's much easier for this, right? But he looks very much like Anthony Edwards from the original uh, Top Gun, even with the same Hawaiian shirt, the same glasses, the mustache. I mean, this is where the fan service is a little bit on the nose, but okay, you just go with it because it's Top Gun. You're like, hell, screw it, man. I'm having a great time watching this film. And he gets on the, uh, the piano plays a little bit of Great Balls of Fire like his dad did, kind of see some flashbacks from uh, when, you know, Pete and, you know, and Goose were, you know, sitting there with uh, Meg Ryan's character back in the day. They're all sitting there with the son on the, the piano, you know, from the original Top Gun. It's a beautiful moment there. But you know that there's some tension happening with these two that it's not quite right. Anyway, fast forward. So Pete Mitchell has to train these pilots and they have to basically, they basically have to do a mission that is it's almost unrealistic to complete. You're going to get, someone's going to go down, something's going to happen. Now, John Hamm, he's sort of like the one that's kind of in charge of the Top Gun Academy, and he's the one telling Pete Mitchell that, hey, look, man, you got to do this, and he's sort of on his ass about it, but the reason that Pete Mitchell is there is because of Admiral Kaczynski Iceman. Iceman wants him in Top Gun to train these pilots to do this because he believes that Maverick is the only one that can do this. He's the only one. Now, as we know, Val Kilmer, I believe he's suffering from throat cancer and he no longer can speak and he's using a voice box and it's it's very heartbreaking, right? And you always wondered, how are they gonna integrate Iceman into this film? Is it just gonna be you know, a flashback or how are they gonna do it? And I'm gonna say right now, this is one of the more emotional parts of the film. Man, you're gonna, get, you're gonna have a lot of feels in this. You're gonna have some tears in your eyes because it's a beautiful scene when they finally meet up in person when you see a scene like this between two characters that you essentially grow up with, you know, you watch Top Gun countless at times, right? And they were always sort of these friendly adversaries. But when you see them in this moment, man, it is absolutely beautiful. It is awesome. And it's one of the better moments in the film. Anyway, I love these kind of movies, right? I mean, I know it's kind of the 1980s storyline or the 1990s. It's simple in a lot of ways. It's like that last mission. That last mission before you just ride off into the sunset. But damn, I love these kind of storylines. Anyway, so we get in there and you find out that these pilots, even though they're pretty good, they really don't know how to dogfight. They really don't know how to maneuver a plane like Maverick. And we get to see some of the best flying dogfighting that we've ever seen on cinema at this point in time. It blows your mind, the shots. And you're probably thinking some of this is CGI, but from what I understand, most of it is not. It's all real actual flying footage, but the way they set it up, it's like they're flying this plane. So the G-force, the way they move, the flying, they're weaving in and out is all real. And they set up all these cameras inside of it. So you get that emotion, you get that, that rawness 
that is just amazing to see. Honestly, I mean, I know they're not gonna give Top Gun any sort of Academy Award, but this guy deserves some sort of director award because to direct this kind of action is fantastic. And then this is where you get the good stuff going, man, because they're sitting in this classroom. There's a bit of a spoiler for this moment, okay? They're sitting in this classroom and Vice is talking about how they're gonna do this thing. They're changing the timing because, you know, uh, Maverick wanted to hit this, go through this valley at a certain timing, which is almost impossible for anybody to do. None of the students could do it. And then all of a sudden you hear a blip on the screen and they're like, what's that? And it's a plane, unidentified aircraft flying. And it's Tom Cruise and an F-18 Hornet going through this cannon faster than he even told the students to do it. And he does the whole maneuver, the whole mission. And everybody and the students were like, holy shit, this guy is good. And then all of a sudden, the respect for Maverick from the students to the higher ups came back and then Vice goes to Tom Cruise after he lands and he kind of almost says, look, I have, I can basically fire your ass. I can put you in, you know, I can throw you the, throw you in jail, you know, throw you the key or whatever the case may be, or we can do another option. And he put, basically puts him in charge of the mission. He is going to fly this mission. Now, in between this, there's a lot of tension between him and Rooster, you know, Pete Mitchell made a promise to his mom, Meg Ryan, before she passed away. She's not in the film, by the way. A little bit of a spoiler. But why? She didn't, she didn't want her son to fly. She didn't want her son to face, you know, what her husband faced. Rightfully so, fair enough. And I love the tension between these two and the chemistry between Miles Teller and, and Tom Cruise is fantastic. It works in this film. Anyway, so they end up, fast forward, they go on to this mission together. And man, you know, it just keeps your hair on your arms just standing up because the tension throughout everything, how they have to complete this mission. And it's very reminiscent. You know what's funny? When you watch that, right, this, right? If you watch the original Star Wars, New Hope for that matter, you know when Luke Skywalker is on, going through the Death Star and he has to fire that missile into this very small point and he's got to basically use the force. You know, but that whole scene where they're in that sort of valley and they're flying through that, it's very reminiscent of that. As a matter of fact, I'm almost like thinking Joe Kaczynski and Tom Cruise are like, hell, screw it. Let's just take from Star Wars. It worked, worked well for uh, Luke Skywalker. Let's kind of use the same thing for this. So it's very, very reminiscent of that. But what happens in these pivotal moments throughout that is after they almost, they do, they, they sort of complete the mission and then this enemy aircraft comes into play. And then there's a big ass dogfight going on and it is awesome to see. And then something happens. The enemy aircraft has a lock on Rooster and he's gonna go down. And then Maverick comes in and just blocks it and he takes the hit and boom, blows up. And you're thinking, shit, he risked his life for Rooster. That's the end of the movie, right? Because then Vice says, get everybody back to the aircraft carrier. And the screen goes black. But that's not the end of the movie. Oh no, it is not. Afterwards, you cut to Tom Cruise. It was on a, he was at a parachute. He landed on the ground in this kind of winter snowy area. And then all of a sudden you see this, this attack helicopter. I don't know exactly what it is. Comes over and it's firing on him and it's firing on him. And it's pretty much that's it. He's done. And then all of a sudden, boom, helicopter goes. Rooster came back for Maverick, baby. He came back against orders to save him. Then boom, his plane gets knocked out. So then he parachutes and lands. This is where it gets a pseudo corny, but by this time you're already bought into all the fan service. So you're like, ah, oh, screw it, man. Let's just go for it, right? They're like, we gotta get out of here. Cause there's a base where this, uh, this mission was being held at. And inside this base, <laughs> this is funny shit, right? Inside this base is an F-14 Tomcat. Yes, the same plane that Maverick and Goose were flying in the original Top Gun movie. And so <laughs> Maverick gets in the plane, Rooster's in the back, just like his dad back in the day. They're flying through this whole damn thing. And I gotta tell you, man, they uh, going through this mission, you know, and they're on an, I mean, these enemy aircraft are like fifth generation planes. They're way advanced more than what the Americans have. They get to a moment and then bam, this character called Hangman saves their ass out of it, who's played by Glenn Powell, by the way, who's like a modern version of Iceman. He's fantastic in this movie. I don't want to say too much about it, but he's in this movie quite a bit, but he's like an Iceman of the era, and he saves their ass. 
you know, snarky remark, gets him unsaved. Crowd gets on the aircraft carrier, just like the original, cheering everybody on. The mission is complete. They rescued everybody. It's all good. And then you get to the point where one of the best lines in cinema we have heard in years, this is said between Tom Cruise and Miles Teller. And I'm not gonna tell you what this is, but the moment that this, just a couple lines were said, man, I had tears coming down my face. It was so beautiful. It was so poignant. Oh my God, man, it made it, it just was beautiful. It was absolutely awesome. There's no political agenda here. There's no uh, PC-ness going on in this. There's nothing about this. You know, you watch a lot of films nowadays and they're always trying to put some hidden subliminal message in there about, you know, society or government or, you know, the left or the right and bad and good and all that stuff. No, it's not there, man. And as a matter of fact, when you talk about the, the enemy, they never mention a country. It's not like Russia or China or anybody else out there that America News is talking about. It's none of that. You don't even know. So what's great is this film can play anywhere in the world and it's not negative to any country, which is great. And I'm glad that they did this because you know what? We've got enough politics from American News out there on TV nowadays. We don't need to see it in the cinemas all the time. And I'm glad that Tom Cruise and Joe Kaczynski and the, the production team went this route. And Tom Cruise knows exactly what to do with the sequel. He knows what the fans want to see and he delivers it and he does it beautifully. And I've said that many times in this review, but it's because it's true. It's everything I wanted to see in a Top Gun sequel. And does it set up for a third one? Those are my thoughts on Top Gun Maverick. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I absolutely love this movie. The Aviators are back on because I feel the need, the need for speed. Subscribe to the channel, like this video, and I'll chat to you soon. Take care.